Hello, hello, my beautiful self-care goddesses. How are you? Hope you're well. My name is Rita Savoya. I'm a certified nutritional practitioner and a holistic wellness coach. And today, stick around because today we're going to talk about the nine self-care habits that can help you boost your mental health. So stick around so that you'll get to listen to all nine. Before I start, I just want to thank you as usual to taking the time out of your busy schedules to listen to these quick little videos that are a wealth of knowledge. And if you want, you can subscribe to further videos by subscribing to my channel and also checking me out on my website and blog posts. And I have so many things going on as well. And I do have my new podcast, yay, Savoya Self-Care Goddess Podcast, which is what I, the information that I'm giving you today was from an amazing conversation that I had with Dr. Gina Di Giulio, a clinical psychologist, but also the founder of Pathwell Clinic here in Toronto. She's amazing, beautiful, talented. I highly recommend that if you or loved ones are having mental health issues, please do contact her. Her team is amazing and they'll be able to help you here in Toronto, but as, as well as remotely. So before we jump into the actual, what are these nine self-care habits that you can start today to help boost your mental health? I want to talk a little bit about the connection. There is definitely a connection between mental health and self-care. So it's intrinsically linked. And as I like to say it, it's, you can't have one without the other. So I, you, I feel it myself that if I don't take care of myself, my mental health suffers. So there is definitely a connection and the research is out there. You know, I'm a research geek. The research is out there proving it. You can read more about it on my blog and you can have the references as well on there. So without further ado, what are these nine things? Let's just get to it right now. I'm going to share my screen as usual, have a quick, beautiful presentation for you, a little bit more writing this time, not as visual as I like to usually um, do them, but it's okay. There was a lot to say. That's why. So these are the nine things and we're going to go into detail uh, in all of these nine things. But basically, Dr. Gina DiGiulio suggested that in order to, to take care of your mental health and boost that mental well-being, it's critical to prioritize self-care. But what exactly about self-care? Well, the first one is to actually carve out time out of your day, out of your busy schedule, carve out the time to physically, okay, to physically write it down <laughs> and carve it up, put it in your calendar, put it on your to-do list, whatever it is, and make it a priority or else it's not going to happen. It ain't going to happen for sure. So schedule it as if it was a doctor's appointment that you didn't want to miss, as if it was a hot date you want, you're going on or an important meeting that you're doing or a kid's actually, no, you know what? A kid's doctor's appointment. How about that? Because I know you will never miss that. You might miss your own because we're such warriors and self-sacrificing women that we've been socialized to do this, that it's so hard for us to take care of ourselves first. We find it like it's selfish, which is not okay. Ladies, self-care is a priority and it's a necessity. It is not a luxury. We need to come to terms with that as a collective group and encourage each other. And that's why I'm here, right? That's my mission is to encourage you to take care of yourself and embrace self-care. All right. Number two, maintain social connections. Now more than ever, reach out to family and friends regularly via phone, Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp video, do go on nature walks with them, etc. You know, I started doing walking and talking video calls with family and friends that are in different locations because, you know, with the lockdowns, we weren't able to see them. So I would literally go for a walk put on my WhatsApp video and chat with my family and friends. So I urge you to do that. And it kind of killed two birds with one stone. <laughs> okay. Number three, 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 um, it is do things that feed your soul. So now more than ever is a great time to reevaluate what you're living, if you're living, not what you're living, if you're living a purposeful life and whether or not it's aligned to your values, it's a really good time to evaluate is this really what I want to be doing? You know, do things that are meaningful and that feed your soul. I love that expression. And that is so subjective because what works for me doesn't necessarily have to work for you. So I'm not going to give you suggestions here, but I will give you this to consider. When there was research done and when people are asked on their deathbed, what things they regret about their lives, what they found, the research found was that they don't regret the things that they did. Listen to this. They regret 
the things that they did not do. So give yourself that time to reflect, to self-reflect on what it is that you're doing in life in at the broader sense, right? And see if it's, uh, is it aligned to your values? And maybe perhaps you have to take one step further and uh, one step back, sorry, and evaluate what are your values? What, what do you value in your life? And then see if those actions, that job, that relationship, even the day-to-day activities that you say yes to, are they aligned to your values? Because what research has found is that the unrecognized source of stress, which is probably one of the highest, is that you're not living a purposeful life. You're not living a life that's aligned to your values. And that is actually unrecognized stress because you would never think of it. You would never think that, oh, I'm in this toxic relationship and that's why it's causing me stress, you know, or I'm not in a very good job that values or or is aligned to my values. And that's obviously causing stress. Some of us might recognize that, but some of us may not. They may just think like carry on with their day and, you know, that they can do anything about it. I mean, this is a conversation for another time. And actually next month we'll be talking all about mindset. So we'll be getting into some of these things that go with the self-talk and what things you can do about it, practical things that you can actually do about it. But for now, consider, consider the day-to-day activities, those small activities. I know you can't quit your job tomorrow, but consider those day-to-day activities. Consider those conversations you have with some toxic people, maybe avoid them, right? And so that it's not, it's not adding stress to your um, life and obviously affecting your mental health. Number four, quattro, practice gratitude. Okay. Incorporate a daily gratitude practice, perhaps. Okay. So Dr. Gina DiGiulio, actually suggested this, perhaps at the end of your day, think of three to five things you're grateful for that day, not yesterday, not tomorrow, not in the past, that day, three to five things that you are grateful for. And I don't know why I keep disappearing here. This is so weird with this, my my green screen. So anyway, keeping a journal is highly recommended. Okay. Not only because the power in writing things down, but also because you can always refer back to it. Right. So when you're not having such a great day, you can actually refer back to that particular uh, journal and see what are some things that happened that week that were really, really good or some things that uh, went really well the past month. Right. So maybe one day out of a month is not too bad. Right. We can be, we can reconcile with that. So be very self um, starting self-disciplined to, to do this every night, three to five things that you're grateful for. And you could even just do it like while you're lying in bed, waiting to fall asleep. Okay. All right. Spend time in nature, scientifically proven to be an antidote for stress and improve mental and overall health. So time in nature lowers blood pressure and stress hormone levels. It reduces nervous system arousal, enhances immune system function, increases self-esteem, reduces anxiety and improves overall mood. So what else can you ask for from mother nature? I'm not sure there is more we can ask from this beautiful lady. So number six, take cardiovascular walks, increase your heart rate by breaking a sweat. So Dr. Gina DiGiulio recommends doing this a 30 minute walks. Okay. Three times a day. It naturally boosts the feel good neurotransmitter serotonin and dopamine. And more about that, more about these beautiful neurotransmitters in later videos. It's proven to be just as effective as taking medication for anxiety and depression. So cardiovascular exercise, these are Dr. Gina's words, is literally like medication for your brain without the side effects. How cool is that? So I highly, highly recommend you taking these cardiovascular breaks, especially walks, especially if you have a heart condition. Okay. Awesome. All right. Moving, moving on. Number seven, it is maintain healthy sleep wake cycles. So you know that sleep is sacred. Okay. Uh, well, that's what I say. And it's also one of the fundamental building blocks of good mental health, but it's also one of the pillars of the Savoya self-care method, right? Cause I truly do believe that sleep is super, super helpful, super restorative, and it repairs during 
it repairs our brain and our body during that restorative deep sleep. Now, we recommend establishing a night routine, right? I mean, we do it for our kids. I don't know why it stops when we're older. Like seriously, I have no idea why that happens, but um, just have a night routine, just like we do, right? Just like our, our children have, right? Or one we did have as kids. So I like to follow the three to one rule, which is avoid food three hours before bed, avoid work two hours before bed, and avoid screens one hour before bed. Okay, so try that rule and let me know how it goes. And I know it can be super, super um, difficult at first, but I think if you get the hang of it and you really establish a routine that you like, for example, instead of uh, watching Netflix, you end up, I don't know, doing playing a, a card game with your partner and your kids or playing a game or um, reading a beautiful book or listening to a podcast or doing some yin yoga is amazing before bed. I'll actually share some with you in later videos or doing some breathing, like really nice, relaxing breathing before bed. Like that would be a, such an amazing story swap that you can do. And it's so good for your sleep. It really sets the tone for a beautiful restorative night's rest. Okay. Number eight, be kind and show self-compassion. Now, what do I mean by this? Like, just be really nice to yourself. And if you, if you do screw up or things go wrong, just self-reflect on what it is that you're telling yourself. What is that self- talk. And again, we're going to have a whole month that we're going to talk about mindset mastery. So we're going to go dive deep into, into this and have some practical tools on how to change that self-talk. But for now, perhaps start like noticing more what you're telling yourself when things don't go so well, or even what you tell yourself when you first wake up in the morning, you know? So yeah, let me know um, in, in the chat. Uh, sorry, not in the chat. Let me know in the comments if that's something that uh, you struggle with, because it, it's, it's a big one. It's a biggie for sure. So make that sincere attempt to be kind and to be pay more, a little bit more patient, to really show some self-compassion, especially during these times. You know, Dr. Gina says, this is not a time to strive for perfection, right? So just, you know, the 80-20 rule, like 80% is okay, or, you know, almost done is better than not being done, you know? And learn to let go of those things that no longer serve you, whether it's toxic thoughts, whether, or unhelpful thoughts, or unresourceful thoughts, or even people as well. Like I'm a big proponent of really evaluating who's in your life and who's adding value and who's taking it away and see if maybe perhaps you can, well, I don't know. I would totally recommend stop talking to them, but maybe talk to them less or maybe be walking out in nature so that if they do say something that upsets you, you're out in nature and it won't affect you as much. Right. Or perhaps like really limit your time with them, make it like an, instead of a whole weekend, just do it a couple of hours or something like that. If you really, really have to see these pers this person or people and can't really say no to them, right? So that's uh, that's kind of my saying, because I do really believe that you are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. So just be choose wisely. And, you know, as the saying goes, you can't change the people around you but you can change the people around you. <laughs> so just keep that in mind, right? All right, number nine, eat nutrient-dense foods. Now, this is definitely close to my heart, being a holistic nutritionist, that food, and I didn't put it last because it's the least, it's definitely very important. They're all very important, I think. But um, eating food is super, super <clears throat> helpful. Why? Because it allows you to avoid those triggers, eating whole foods, sorry, um, whole foods, is super, super helpful because it allows you to avoid those foods that are not nutrient dense, right? And deplete, if they're not nutrient, nutrient dense, they will deplete critical vitamins and minerals that are building blocks, just like sleep for optimal mental health being. So what do I recommend? Eat farm to table as much as farm to table, which means unprocessed, basically local in season, organic, non-GMO foods, as many as possible, as much as possible. Okay. And now I totally get it. Organic food can be expensive. So maybe perhaps you can eat local or you can maybe eat in season, or you can buy frozen. Um, cause that tends to be a little bit cheaper, but highly, highly recommend the non-GMO stuff. Okay. Because 
those pesticides, specifically glyphosate, it is really harmful to the, our brain. Okay. And I'm going to go into more detail in another video, because I'm going to talk about the gut brain access. And I'm going to talk about the 12 most nutrient dense foods that are good for your brain. So hold on to that. You might think, okay, what does that mean? Whole foods for now, my recommendation is stick to the perimeter of the grocery store. Don't try to avoid, avoid going into the aisles stick to the perimeter, avoid as much as possible uh, processed foods, as well as artificial sweeteners and sugar. Uh, be really, maybe I'll have another video on how to actually read um, food labels, because that's super important. Remember that the first ingredient is what's in, in, in there the most. So if sugar is, is the first ingredient, it's made up of sugar, basically. Okay. And uh, we know as well that sugar is detrimental to the brain and the to neurotransmitters. So please, please, please be very cautious of that. And just really enjoy nutrient dense foods because they're so good for us and they're so good for our brain and our body and really optimal for that mental health and well-being. So last but not least, I want to leave you with a quote. In my opinion, self-care and mental health is like a horse and carriage. You can't have one without the other. And as always, please do join our mailing list because you will get, you will stay abreast of these amazing um, topics and news that we that I talk about. And you can do that uh, on my website. You can actually register for the mailing list there. There is, I want to announce that I do have a podcast now. Yay! Self-Care Goddess Podcast. You can search for it on your favorite wherever you've listened to your podcasts. And you can also follow me on social media at Savoya Self-Care, as well as on Facebook. All right. I'm super excited for what's to come. Thank you. Thank you again for your precious time. And I wish you a beautiful day. Mwah. Ciao for now, ladies.